But, and I was at Hancock's house in L.A. because I lived out there. And I'm standing on this balcony and I say, hey, a buddy of mine wrote lyrics to one of your songs. I have a dream. And he says, oh, he couldn't even hardly remember because he wrote it like in 68, 67. And this was like in 80, what was it? it was 89, you know, when I'm talking to him about it. And I says, I, so I, I, I showed him the lyrics and he says, no, they don't make sense. So I had to rewrite them like three times, you know. And then he finally gave me the green light to, if I wanted to, I could record them. Mm. All I had to do was check with uh, 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 David Rubenstein. To see if David Rubinson, else, a yeah, dear Rubinson. friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, dear friend. He wanted me to check with him to see if anybody else had done any lyrics of that song. And no one had done anything except for Quincy Jones did oohs and ahs on this song. Anyway, so I'll play a little bit for you. Is that too loud? Or let me get Keep going. Back. To that song, but uh, time constraints, I'll just try to play the. No, no, it's fine. Play some, play some, play some, yeah, play some modal jazz. Do it. Now, this is going to be, uh, this is McCoy Tyner. This was his version of uh, a song written by Antonio Carlos Jobim. Oh, dig, dig. Wait, you remember this? Wave. Wave. Wait. You know, uh, if Hubert Eves is out there uh, watching live on yeah. Facebook, yeah. Uh, would you have any any words for Hubert? Can you can you bring us back to the? Yeah, Hubert. You know, your dad was one of a kind, and he taught me a lot. What did he teach you? 
Well, you know, his dad was a physiologist. He could sit there and look at somebody and tell you what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are. Wow. You know, if they loved their parents or if they didn't love their parents, if they were a follow-through type of person or if they were a pace setter or a time waster. <laughs> did, did, you know, he told the story when he moved to New York that uh, he walked in to a club one night and uh, he turned around and Thelonious Monk was there mm. by himself and he played around midnight for him and he looked over at Thelonious and all, he did, all Thelonious did was just wink at him. He gave him the thumbs up. Did you have a chance to, to hang with Monk at all? No, I never got a chance to meet up with Monk. But I do, uh, you know, I did meet up with uh, Dave Brubeck, though, speaking of those kinds of types of players that are very, very... Luminary kind luminary of Luminary kind yeah. of guys. And I didn't realize that he was like 6'4". Tall cat. Yeah, and uh, he came into my store again, like Mr. Hubert Eves did, and uh, he was performing. He, I guess he was in there just to look at the music store. And uh, I met him at the door, and I says, hey, you know, come on in and how you doing and welcome to Minneapolis. And I did the same thing for Miles Davis. You know, when I've got a chance to fortunately meet him, uh, I, uh, I'll tell you both stories maybe simultaneously. But speaking of Brubeck first, I says, what's your most important or fun that you're having nowadays in your life? And he said, working with his son. Yeah, his son plays the, uh, the drums. And he says, I'm, I'm on tour with my son and I can't believe it. So that was one thing. Now, speaking of Miles Davis, since uh, we're on to all these giants, um, he came to town one year, and I asked all the cats, all the musicians that were jazz buffs and enthusiasts for years, had anybody ever said, welcome to Minneapolis to the guy? <laughs> Nobody ever done that. So I said, no, I got to do that. So I got on the phone. I did all due diligence trying to find out where he's staying and what room and yada, yada. He ended up answering the phone at the, at the hotel like, oh. He said, oh, who's this? I said, this is Larry Loud. I'm a piano player, man. Welcome to Minneapolis. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> what? And he says, you don't want tickets to the show? I said, no, no. I just want to say thank you. And, you know, congratulations. Come on. You know, welcome to Minneapolis. He could not believe it. He invited me to the show backstage and the whole bit. So I showed up there, and there was Joe Hill leading me in because <laughs> he knew how to get in the back door. I didn't know even know where the back door of the orchestra hall was. And there's Miles opening the door. You're the guy that called me, huh? Come on in. And I'm like, I can't believe it. I'm walking down the hall with Miles Davis, man. And he's telling me, yeah, you know, you sure you don't want to? Yeah, I got a seat for you anyway. You're sitting over there. And yada, yada. He showed me to my seat and the whole bit, man. And uh, I'll never forget that. So whenever he came to Minneapolis, I, I tried to get a spot close to the stage so I could give him a wink, you know, and say, hey, I'm here. <laughs> And the last time he was there, he was at Prince's uh, uh, place, and he was playing a Cindy Lauper tune, uh, time after time. And I figured it was quiet enough for me to sneak up on front, and I said, "Hey, how you doing?" He's, he was taking a solo, but he saw me because the lighting can't change, and it came right down. <laughs> it was weird how that worked out, but anyway, so I we, we were able to stay in touch. And bless his heart, he's well, dead. Why don't now. you just keep play something, play something funky, and, and let's 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 uh, dedicate oh. this to Hubert Eves and all the cast looking okay. around the world, right? All right, now this one. Uh, let's see if I want to do, uh, how about I'll do an original? Do it. All right, let me see if I do that. All right, okay, we'll go. Let's try it. I 
<laughs> you know, we, I mean, listen, I want you to talk about two guys in particular. One guy, I, I'm connected to all these cats worldwide, and we're getting a huge reaction to you on Facebook worldwide right now. Thank you. Uh, Buster Williams, yeah. uh, you, you, uh, you, you played with Buster, you, can you, I mean, that Actually, dude, it's kind of funny, he and I, when he came, to, when I met him, when he came to town, he came to town with Ron Carter. Now, uh, I had already, uh, I, uh, it's funny because uh, I met him through Victor again, right? And I was telling him my experience with Herbie just a year prior to, and uh, he was laughing and and he told me all kinds of whopping stories about him and Herbie and whatnot and, and uh, their shows and unbelievable experiences. And I said, well, listen, man. He says, he's looking all clean and dapper. I says, looks like you need a shoe shine. He says, he's, he asked me for it. Where can I go to get a shoe shine? I said, listen, man, I got it. So I took him all around to my guys. <laughs> and I took him out to the mall. It was near the, the Mall of America wasn't even built then. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took him out to the mall. And uh, introduced him to my uh, shoe shine guy, mm -hmm. who was a black guy, who was an old guy that knew all these guys too. And it was a heck of a camaraderie that they developed. And I took him to the airport, and took, you know, I introduced him to a young lady that wanted to play the bass, and he inspired her. So that was my role, was really trying to inspire other people through them. You know, if they met him and whatnot, and so we hung out. So we never stayed out of touch with each other over the years. And so uh, after, you know, as time went on, when I went to New York, that story I was just telling you about where I took my son out there, he, he and I were sitting there and he says, you know, Larry, I've never heard you play the piano. But he had a piano in his little study there, so I went in and we jammed, and that was a good experience there. But he never knew that I played the piano. In fact, Herbie, uh, his last visit to, uh, before I left, I had what year was, I forget the exact year, but he was then playing, uh, he had the New Standard going, that album. And he was producing, he was just with a, a, a forget who he had on guitar, but uh, anyway, so he came to town with that group, and I took it, he wanted to go out, and we, we hung out, and we got in my car, I had a different car than in the first car I had when he first saw me, and so this one had a cassette deck in it, right, a, a CD player rather, and I just finished pressing that, uh, this song that I just played for you, the Bebop Boogie song, and uh, I put it in, and all this time he didn't even know that I, he's like, uh, he's listening, and I go, he says, who's that on bass? And I, I named my hand Lefty. So I said, no, that's Lefty. No, I'm lefty. Wow. And he goes, that's a pretty good bass player, man. And I said, so I was like, I'm driving up going, what should I tell him? <laughs> so finally, when we got to the restaurant, I said, oh, by the way, Lefty is my left hand. And he couldn't believe it. He says, wow. And so he gave me a, the biggest compliment I could ever get from one of those kind of guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where I surprised him in a way that he'd never been surprised before. Can you can you play? Buster was on the West Coast with the Jazz Crusaders. Can yeah. you play a Crusaders or even so far away, Carol 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 King? Oh, I got a, I got an arrangement on uh, whose song did I do an arrangement on? I did a Far Away is a good one. Put it where you want. Put put it, put it where you want it. Treat okay. me. Yeah. Put Let treat me. Let me see. Let me see if I got one. For got Larry you. Loud here in the studio. Hubert Eves. Okay. We're having we're marinating with Hubert Eves right now. For some reason, I, I wanted to play Take Five. Can I do it? Do it, man. Because I, I do that. But just play it with Morello's, with that drum rhythm in, in, in okay, mind, I'm you know? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Let me see if I can come up with something better. Uh, if, unless I do it in four. Just do it. Okay. I'll do it in four. First, I'll do it in five. <laughs> Small keyboard. <laughs>
beautiful, man. How about how about how about some more uh, a pop tune like Carol uh, oh, Carol King like so far she away? Can remember this one? Yeah. Let's see if I can get in another. Okay. Or Snow Queen. Loving this stuff worldwide. Oh. Keep it coming on Facebook here. Larry, Larry, did you? One of the cats that Hubert got connected with was was Gary Bartz. Oh, Gary, yeah. yeah, yeah did, Gary. He, I he, test Gary. Can you can you uh, you know like a tune something like I've known rivers some kind oh, of yeah. some kind of tune? Can you sing a tune? So even original tune, but something okay. something that elicits a real gospel soul okay. jazz kind of okay, feel. Okay. Soul jazz. All right, okay. Got Larry Loud here, and we're just yeah. at, we're, it's he's on demand right now. I got one for you. And uh, this is, uh, how about this one for Nat King Cole? It's all right, baby. And then we'll do it this way. Enchanted boy, they say he wandered very far, very far over land and sea. A little shy and sad of eye, but very wise. Was he? Then one day, one magic day, he passed my way. And as we spoke of many things, fools and kings, this he said to me the greatest thing. Just to love and be loved and return. Uh. <laughs> I did. I omitted the solo part, but <laughs> we're just getting started here with Larry Lab. Larry, why don't you play an original? Like, what are your gigs around Tucson looking like these days? Well, you know, I came here to play. That's what uh, I was hired by George Howard. Uh, you know, oh, I know I George very well. Great yeah. drummer, great singer. Yeah, I met him 20 years ago. And uh, I always told him, I'll be back. Because I had to go back to Minneapolis, right? I had a lot of gigs back there, and I couldn't T.O. T- him anymore. Because I did the hotel circuit a lot. That's what I do. And so he says, well, one of these days, whenever you come back, give me a call. Well, 20 years now. I go to, I'm finishing with my latest CD, which is called Saying It Loud. And I told my producer back in Minnesota, my engineer guy, 
who's much like your guy Mike, by the way. You know, he's got this. He, this guy was a veteran, though. He had lots, he's a lot older. He's ten years my senior. And uh, I says, okay, now it's done. Where do I want to promote it? Well, I want to promote it in warm climate because I'm in Minnesota. It's too cold. <laughs> so I got on my phone and my Rolodex, and I called all my people because I, when I was working for Motown in, in California, though, Los Angeles, I called my people. Uh, for example, uh, um, H.B. Barnum. Oh yeah, you know him. I'm, I'm friends with him on Facebook. So HB's could be watching this right yeah, now. Yeah, so you. Oh, I hope if you are H, I love you, man. You taught me a lot. So he's I, a badass. Yeah, and so all these guys. Uh, what was I saying about that? Uh, Warm climate for the tr for the record. Yeah, for the record. And I get it. So I'm calling, and, I, and H is no longer doing it. He's retired, as you know. And a lot of these people that were that I was connected with are no longer. I mean, Chocolate City Records, uh, Norman Whitfield. Chocolate City. I, I can't believe you were on that label. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. So Jeez. anyway, um, I, so then I said, well, let me call Arizona. I knew this guy, George Howard, and I called him up. And do you know he answers his phone? I said, that's the first, because of all the people, nobody was answering their phone, and yada, yada, yada. He has his phone, I says, man, he says, come on out, Larry, I got this gig for you, perfect for, he wanted to promote a duo concept. And so was I, back in Minnesota. So I said, hey, perfect. So I got on the first thing smoking, and, and I came out here. And George, sure enough, came, he had all these, I, you know, we shared collaborations on how to do this. And I said, well, if you want, I'll, I'll incorporate some of my songs into your song list. He said, okay, well, we'll do it slowly. And, and so he had a booking at Sullivan Steakhouse. So I worked with him there, and then I did a solo piano there also, and then he had some other gigs, and, and that was my acclamation to getting everything. And it was no problem, because I didn't have to have a keyboard. Because each one of these places that he was playing at had a piano. And so, and even uh, 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 oh, at some of the, like the resorts, he had the resort gigs, and he used to have <laughs> as long as it was in tune, it was, it, that's what I did. And I said, well, I'll give you two years of my life, and then after that, I have to figure out where I'm going. So I moved here in 2010, so 2013, that's when I, sit, I hit the magic age of 62, 63, and I retired. And so I told him, I said, I'm going to move, I'm going to do my own thing now. Thanks, George. And I still thank you, George. And so that's what I've been doing. And so I've been working with the One Heartbeat. And then I put my own band together called Larry Loud and the Possibilities. Who's in that group? Well, in that group, it's, it's unknown people sometimes. Okay, it's, it's like, because I look at it from trying to inspire the unknown musicians. Oh, I dig. It's a, right? it's a people's history of music. Yeah, and so and I, I, I'll go listen to this one guy and say, hey, listen, man, I got this gig. You know, I'll call you up if you're ready. If you're able to play it, I'll, I call the concept the Possibilities because you guys could be in the Possibilities because I look at it as... The audience is part of the possibilities as well, right? And so that's why I, I use that term. So right at the moment, though, I, I what uh, some of the recordings that, I, that you see on YouTube have the guys like Paul, what's Paul's like? Paul Daniels on drums, uh, and then a guy by the name of Tony Murata on Kungedos, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, then I had uh, before that I had uh, he's he's dead now, bless his heart, James Hunt. Oh, a great drummer. Yeah, he was my, my first choice. He was Amo's drummer for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whenever he wasn't working with Amo, if he had time, if I had the... He, he was willing. He said, Larry, I'll work with you anytime. As long as, it, you know, it didn't conflict. Hey, so, well, you know, i got a question. Can you play a tune for Fulcher? I know Fulcher's looking, looking oh, at this. Oh, Larry Fulcher. Larry Fulcher. Yeah, yeah. He and I were good buddies. Hey, Larry, man, how you doing? Larry, do you, do the, Larry I, I still haven't talked to Larry on the my show. The one that he might remember. I want he Larry played, to hear this, you know? Let me see. But he might remember this one. He he helped, he played, I think he he studied this one with me, a song that I wrote. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we'll see. Okay. Let's go. Joined ahead. here by Larry Loud, live on Facebook. Keep it coming. Keep the comments coming. Oh man, thank you. And then this one is uh My genuine 
Tasty. Hey, before we wrap up this live Facebook, I, could you, could you, is it possible to do a Donny Hathaway tune? Oh, yeah. Someday we'll all be free, yeah, something like yeah. that. I want you I to got sing one it. for you for Donny. Huh? You know, this one I love for Donny because he, he did this with, uh, I forget. Roberta uh, Flack? Yeah, Roberta. Yeah. Uh, right. Where am I at here? Oh, wait a, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, take two. Take two, baby. That's not the song. Right. That's not the song. I got another one for you. Do it. Uh, uh, uh. Well, 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 we got we to gotta stop the kill. <laughs> it's all right. I got to come up with another one for him. For, for Donny Hathaway to see... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Just for the record, Larry Loud has been on, <laughs> improvising on the fly for the last 35 minutes. So. Oh, here's one for you. Here we go. He didn't do this one, but uh, Stevie wanted to... I said, you are the sunshine of my life. I was trying to remember. I'll do this acapella for Donnie because he did this one that was on uh, Valdez. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, the t this was uh, what was the name of that one? You know, I'm gonna have to come back to Donnie because I did. Oh wait a minute. Everything is everything. I think it was. Uh, let's see. Uh, Valdez in the country, or uh, oh, someday can't. we'll all be free. You know. Oh man, I'm, well, I'm so many thinking. Sorry, about Donnie that. was a is a uh, spiritual cat. Also, he played the piano. I yeah. mean, he was he was a brilliant. Brilliant player too. Had a chance to meet him. I mean, did, can you just talk to the audience a little bit about uh, embracing the jazz life, Larry? I mean, yeah. the, here's the bottom line: Donnie, it was mm -hmm. a soul singer, and, mm -hmm. a, and a, but the jazz life mm -hmm. is a manic life. Mm -hmm. 
and I was hoping you could talk a little bit about embracing that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And for peeps out there that are considering a, a, a life in melodic improvisation, mm -hmm. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, one of the things that I came from the R&B background. See, I uh, had a group in the day called the Marvelous Marauders. Okay, and in fact, in, uh, in 2004, that band was inducted in the Minneapolis, I mean, in Minnesota Music Hall of Fame. And uh, it was nine-piece horn band with wow. four horns, and I was just, I was the James Brown of the day because I did the stand-up singing, jumping, and doing the splits. And in fact, uh, where's the I, video of that? Yeah, <laughs> I got one. I just kind of crazy. I do have one, but uh, in in fact, people in the audience from time to time, I'd look out, and, and I remember t uh, just a case in point for your audience, Prince. Used to come and watch some of my gigs. Wow, I right? love it. it, when he, it Herbie he used to, got, Herbie. This, he nobody knows this, but Herbie used to go in and check out Cal Jader's piano player, Al Zuleika. Oh, Everybody right. looks up to somebody else. Isn't that funny? Well, I remember. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, in the in the day, you know. But I came from that genre, right? And then when I, you know, from the tuxedo scene mm -hmm. and all that, because we did, uh, we played Chicago circuit, we played mm -hmm. that whole state fair circuit and all that. So when the band broke up, I decided I wanted to, because I've always played piano my whole life, since I was five years old. And so I, I, I did some soul search and I said, it's time for me to be able to sing everything I can play and play everything I can see, sing. And so I, I focused more and I, so I started, that's when I was working with Joe Hill. And I, was, I started teaching more and learning more too, because I was studying while I was teaching. You know, my, the teachers that I had, when I wasn't teaching their students or my own students, I was studying under them, you know, and, and get my homage there. And so I wanted to break into the jazz circuit, and I found out it was a tight click, right? And so I yeah. said, well, I got to figure out how to get in it. And at the time, they used to have jam sessions on Sundays like they do here. And so you'd show up and, you'd, you know, one gal was a singer, and uh, she's, I think she's dead now, but Roberta Davis. Uh, a lot of your fans that are the professionals out of Minnesota, like I know that uh, Hubert knows her very, very well. She was the singer for, I don't know if you remember a guy by the name of Manfredo Fest mm. from Brazil. Anyway, she sang all his songs on his record. And uh, so uh, she would have all these gigs and she'd have piano players come up, you know, and so I studied her song list, right? And uh, she, her favorite song was... <laughs> Right? Right? And I thought, okay, so I learned that song. And uh, so now she I get up on the band and she calls me up and I've learned it in C minor. Right? But like a lot of folks know, you said earlier, I heard you saying earlier that Coltrane and all those guys when you learn in every key. Every every song and every, every key. Sing, and, you know. and so I didn't do that at that time. Because I'm coming from the R and B world, right? I get up on the bandstand, she turns around and she says, she saw me as a little cocky guy, right? So she says, what do you want to sing? Or what do you want to play? And I says, uh, uh, My Funny Valentine. She says, okay. She turned around to the microphone and started counting it off. One, two. And then she turned around and she said, E minor. Four. And then everybody was supposed to start. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> And so, but fortunately, I knew enough from my classical training to figure out how to quickly sure. press pulse. Can you can you uh, before we we wrap up here? I mean, we've just been cooking along. Do you have a can you can you you bust out a, a Willie Hutch tune or a or an average white band tune? Oh wow, let's see. I can't at the moment. I cut guess the I'm, cake or I mean, you're uh, or Dyke in the, the Dyke in the Blazers, the Hank Ballard in the Midnighters, or even a James Brown tune. Whatever. Oh, you James want. Brown, I could do one of his probably. Like I feel good or something. Sing uh, it, baby. Uh, uh.
to play that song. In fact, uh, James Hunt used to sing that in Amo's band. So when, from time to time, I would work with uh, Amo, by the way, since I've been here. I love Amo. And uh, his piano player wanted to take a vacation. Peter. I mean, what's his first I think it's Paul. Yeah, Paul. And uh, so Paul wanted to take a break, and so he gave me the song list, and I learned all those songs that you just mentioned. <laughs> Some of them I forget, though. After yeah, it's all right. I got all my originals I'm working on. I got about 13 originals I'm working on. So I've been forgetting a lot of those other people's musics. But anyway, that was one of the songs that James used to sing, James Hunt. Larry, Larry Loud, we're going to get together. I'm going to bring my drum, my modified trap set over. I'm going to oh, be part of the coalition. All right. And uh, much love to you, man. Thank all you for right. being part of the program. This was a vibrant, vibrant session. Oh, thank you.